Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Everybody say hey. Yeah, I like that. Hey, look, real quick. This is the last day. The last time y'all will probably see our youth before the Valentine's banquet. That's this Saturday, this Friday night from 6 to 8 p.m. If you if you want that, there's some youth here with some tickets. One, two, three, probably about eight or so. So they got tickets, so go up to them, let them know every bit of that money goes into their account so that they can go to camp and fall convention and all that good stuff. It helps them to be able to go out and, and learn more about God, grow closer to Christ. So it's a really good thing. So we're going to get this started. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us this chance to be in your house. I pray that you just guide the words that come into our body, God, that we can receive it in the manner that you have us to, God. I pray that you be with the musicians and the pastor as they go forth and doing this for you, God. Thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen.
the splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself.
sanctuary, the dwelling place of the glory of God. I refuse to be silent in the house and in the courts of my God. From the fruit of my lips I will offer up a sacrifice of praise. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Don't make me come out here and preach to you. I said, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, don't hold nothing back. All oh, that is within me. I will praise him continually. He's been too good to me for me not to say thank you. He's been too good to me not to say I love you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Get it on over here. Hallelujah. In the section. Hallelujah. Y'all messing with the wrong man this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Put it together. Give God one great hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like praising, praising Him. I do, I do, I do. You know, that's what you're going to happen when you get saved. You're married to the Lamb. That's what you say is, I do. Tell your neighbor, say, I do. I will praise the Lord. See, some of y'all just need to loosen up. Y'all just need to loosen up. Y'all don't think nothing about going down the road bopping to Little Wayne. Boom, 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 boom. There ain't no rhythm in boom, boom, boom. You got to go back to some old school to get some rhythm. Y'all don't think nothing about bebopping to 50 cent. 50 cent, really? 50 cent. Man, give me a dollar's worth of anything. Y'all don't think nothing about going down and shaking it off with Taylor Swift. But the minute we get in God's house, everybody stiffens up. And if y'all would just learn to loosen up and get rid of stiffen up, you might be surprised how quick that devil will leave that's got you bound in your circumstance. I'm preaching better than you're. So when I sing how great is my God, I'm just letting my God know how much I love him. But I'm also serving an eviction notice on the devil. You got to get out here, devil. I ain't waiting till the stop sign. I'm putting you out on the curb right now. How great is our God. Oh, sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how Great. How great, come on, we're going to sing it again, is my God. Oh, if you believe he's great, sing it to it.
your hands together one more time. I feel him. I feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. I praise you. You're worthy of my praise. I praise you all by myself if I have to. But I came to lift up the name of Jesus. I came to say thank you. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hug somebody by the neck and say, whatever is wrong today, it can be fixed today. Hug them right by the neck and say, whatever is wrong today can be fixed today. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Downward for cleansing. There to my heart. Glory to his name. I said glory to his name. And glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was a blood of life. Glory to do it one more time. I feel my sick. thankful for the word and I'm thankful for the blood. That's how I overcome the enemy. Amen. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I appreciate good worship that gets me into the, the presence of the Lord. So glad to have all of the, the, the church family with us and glad to have Jenna today all the way. Come on, give Jenna a great big God bless you. Brother Chant invited her and she showed up to church today and we're so glad to have her. Then we're also glad to have Sister Liz all the way from North Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> Heard about this good move of God we got going on. It's all glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're just a part of what the kingdom is getting ready to do. And glad to have Sister Liz this morning. Amen. Let me, let me make a couple of quick announcements, very, very quick, and then uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, receive our offering in just a little bit. But we have a Valentine banquet coming up. That's right. And it's this coming Friday night, that's right, from 6 to 8, and it's going to be the best spaghetti. Listen to me. If you could afford a plane ticket to Paris, France, to get some spaghetti, won't touch this one. Won't touch this one. You know why? Because this is kingdom spaghetti. <laughs> and I know the sauce is coming from Walmart here in Macomb, but this is kingdom spaghetti. Don't you just love being able to laugh in church, though? Man, I've been in some services. Man, if you even broke a smile, somebody would want to escort you out. We don't smile over here. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> but we're going to have a spaghetti supper from 6 to 8, and this is for all of the, uh, uh, the, the, the singles and the, and the couples and the newlyweds and those that want to be newlyweds. We ain't got no ticket. You gave it away. You got way more. Where is it at? It's in your office. We, uh, you know, we have been, we've been selling tickets and we've been giving some dinners away. Sometimes $6 and $12 is hard to find. And if you, if you would like to come and you say, well, Pastor, my budget's just stretched. I'd love to come and have some spaghetti and fellowship with those of like faith. And you would like to have a free ticket for you and your spouse. This is a $12 ticket for you and your spouse or you and your girlfriend or whatever. Wave at me if you'd like to have one. Nobody. I'll eat on it myself then. Praise God. If you want to, uh, if you want to have a ticket, if you've already got your ticket, thank you so much. God bless you uh, for uh, for supporting the youth. This is for fine art and different youth events and things like that. This is a general council year, and so we've got about six young people, I believe, six or seven somewhere. That, that, that's going, that wants to go to fine art, six that want to go to fine art. And I want to tell you something. That is a tremendous representation from our church for young people that are singing and doing something
for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd rather have our young people singing Open the Eyes of My Heart than I would singing anything that's secular. Amen. And I'm excited that we've got six young people and they've got practice today at 3 o'clock, so don't forget that young people. But we want you to come and be a part of the, uh, uh, the, the banquet this Friday night. And if you don't have a ticket and you would like to have a ticket, just see Brother Wendell over there. That's Brother T. Wendell Durham sitting over here. And, uh, and uh, he will hook you up. That's the word they use over here. He'll hook you up. And uh, we, we want to be a blessing to you. Also, let me just make, uh, make you aware, some of you have already noticed some of the, the different color patches and stuff we have going on in the sanctuary. Last Sunday, we had our uh, church annual business meeting where we elected new officers, and we also took care of some church business. And some of that old business that, was, that bled over into new business was a sanctuary makeover. And we have been blessed this week, and I've only got to meet Sister Liz this time, but she attends one of the most dynamic churches in the United States, that's North Little Rock First Assembly of God, Pastor Rod Lloyd. Known all over the world, and she attends that church, and she has been here, and she has been a blessing to us, helping us pick out some colors and things like that, schemes, and Brother Henry Tidwell, uh, I see a son today, but I don't see Brother Henry, but they started painting this foyer, and uh, he, he, he gave us a bid, and he painted this, this hallway for free, just because he loves his home church. Amen. And he's going to begin this next week on the foyer and then in here. And I want to say thank you to Sister Liz for helping us. She didn't have to do this. Uh, and Sister Ginger just usually, uh, they get out and they have a good time together. But she has given up her vacation time and friendship time with Ginger. That would be a blessing to our church. You ought to let her know you love her and appreciate her. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> And with that said, and, and the, the, the paint that we're about to begin, now this is something you wanted to do long before I, Dr. T. Ron ever got here. So I don't want you leaving here saying, well, he done stirred it all up. Do I? Thank you, Sister Donna. I'll run with you now, Sister. Amen. Took the edge off for me, Sister Donna. But this is something that, uh, you know, the Lord in Haggai chapter 1 and verse 4, he talks about how well our houses do, how modern our houses are, but the house of the Lord lays in ruin, meaning that it needs repair, and we do not invest in the Lord's house. How many of you like great-looking facilities? How many of you love great-looking facilities? Let me tell you something. First appearance goes a long way, ladies and gentlemen. And you're blessed with tremendous facilities. But we thought, well, at this time, for a fresh coat of paint and a few things, we're going to make over our sanctuary. And, um, but in order to do that, ladies and gentlemen, it takes money. Now, I knew you'd stove up on me right there. Yeah, true Pentecost came out right there. Praise God. It takes money. Now, don't get upset about that. It takes money to put new carpet in your house. It takes, new, it takes money to paint your house. And the Lord's house, this is where we entertain the Holy Spirit. This is where we welcome the King of all kings, the righteous judge. Man, can't nobody do me like Jesus. And when I get to God's house, I want him to just put it on me. And so with the remodeling going on, what we are going to do when we receive our offering, we have some cards right down here on the communion table. And we want you to begin to pray about helping us uh, recover or sow, is a better word, back into the sanctuary makeover uh, general fund uh, recovery. And what this is, as the money that we invest in the sanctuary makeover, we want to give you an opportunity just to say, you know what, Pastor, we love this vision. 
We love the direction that the leadership is taking us on, and we can't wait to us. It's all finished, and we can see the finished product. Amen. Someone told me once time, said, well, we don't amen real good. All you got to do is ask for one, amen? amen. See how good you are. And you just can't wait to see the finished product and the beauty of what it's going to look like. But we, we're, we're taking money from the church that we have, and we're going to invest in this. But we want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed. Now, let me tell you what the Lord spoke to my heart. We were, we were praying, and I always get nervous. I'll be the first one to admit it. I get nervous. New pastor, four months new, and here I find myself in a sanctuary makeover. I didn't ask for this. I just want to come in here and settle in and just do my thing. I had not had a chance to do that yet. God started moving, and it's, I'm comfortable when God starts moving. And I promised the Lord, I said, however long you have me there at Macomb, I'll do what you tell me to do. You ought to shout right there. At least you'll have an obedient shepherd. To preach what he says, preach. Speak what he says, speak. Flow when he says, flow. And so we need your help, though. And, I, and the Lord was speaking to me. I said, Lord, you know I'm really kind of nervous about this. And he said, don't worry about it. This is what I want you to do. And he, I believe the Lord spoke this to my spirit, so I'm speaking it to you. I'm believing God, my vision to get this sanctuary makeover complete, I'm believing for 100 people to sow a seed between now and September the 1st of $300. $300 from today to September the 1st, however you want to do it, and I want you to start praying right now of what you can do. You say, Pastor, that's way out of my ballpark. Do what you can. The widow gave her two mites. And that two mics that she gave to the Lord was just as important as my $300. Do something. Skip a Wendy's burger. You don't need that triple classic. Clogs up your arteries. Amen. Put weight on you. And we want you to do something. 100% participation helps us put this money back in our general fund so we can move on to the next project. I've learned one thing. Pentecostal people need a project. We need a vision. The church in general does. Because when we see movement, people get excited about the church moving. Amen. Amen. And we're moving. So we're, we're going to ask you to pick up a card when you bring your offering up in just a few minutes and take a card and, and fill it out and then let us know. Please turn it in uh, to us today. Uh, Anytime I'm preaching today, now I got this from Jake's and Dollar and everybody else. When you fill out your, your card and you want to put in your offering today, if you want to do it all today, that's fine. But when you bring in your card uh, and you fill it out, just bring it up here while I'm preaching. If I say something you like, a good little nugget, you know, you just bring your card or your offering right up here and you drop it right on the altar. But please make sure you designate this general fund, sanctuary, make a Make up, recovery. Got the card. Maybe if I read the card. I make a monetary pledge to faith assembly for the amount shown below to help pay off our sanctuary makeover. With God's help, I will pay the entire amount by paying a monthly payment or a lump sum by September 1st. I will mark my tithe envelope. Sanctuary makeover general fund. And understand it will replenish the general fund for monies already spent on the makeover or will be used to complete the makeover. I'm excited. Three of us are. But we're going to take up and receive our tithe and offering, and we want you to begin to pray about what you can do. I'm believing God for 100 people to sow a $250 seed. And I believe if we do that, and no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't need 100 people. I need 97 people because three's already given their seed. When you see what God wants to do through your church, you'll sow that seed. Amen. And we'll just keep on trucking with Jesus. Get your tithe ready. Prepare an offering, if you would, please. This is a card. If you don't need one of these cards, if you want to sow today, thank you. God bless you. If you need some time to September to sow a seed, 
thank you and God bless you. Please do something. Father, today we, are, we have come to the place of worship. We're in the position of worship by preparing our tithe and our offering. The tithe is commanded, the blessing rests upon the offering. And today we are extremely blessed because we have tremendous facility that you have blessed us with. And Father, we don't want just a state-of-the-art building if it has no glory in it. But everything that we do is to proclaim to Pike County, Macomb, Mississippi, that we, number one, are always careful and responsible to take care of what you have blessed us with called the house of God. Today, Father, as we bring our tithe and over and above giving, speak to the heart, Holy Spirit, right now. Everyone to do something. At least 100 people here who can sow a $250 seed by September 1st. All of us should be able to do something. And today, I ask you in advance for your, 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 your blessing upon every person that steps out by faith to do something for your house. And as we bring in today's tithe offering and over and above giving, we are believing you for a supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. We're believing you for jobs and better jobs, checks in the mail, inheritances, secure investments, scholarship, creative ideas, finding money, healing for our spirit, soul, and body, deliverance to the captive, salvation to the lost, and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We are blessed. Faith Assembly is blessed, and we will be a blessing to others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, bring your tithe and offering. Pick up a card and do something for the kingdom of God. Amen. Well, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will see this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for you. Children's Church, you are dismissed. Hallelujah, and I didn't have to be told. <laughs> Amen. Isn't God good to us? I don't know about y'all, but I am so thrilled to be a part of Faith Assembly of God. I'm so thrilled to be a part of the family of God at Faith Assembly. I'm so glad that Jesus decided to send me over here to worship him with y'all. Man, y'all just a good bunch of people. I just love y'all. We've got Book of Life. If you have not signed up for the Book of Life, hey, Courtney, hit that video for me one time. Sister, let me just show y'all.
the technology, the vision that people are coming up and say, Pastor, we need to launch into this. And I said, I like it. So hit that first one for me there, sister. Hold on just a second. That means add me up. And I won't preach very long today. <laughs> if it's good, it don't matter how long it is. If it's bad, y'all just bear with me. Amen. And I would like to make you aware of our first evangelistic outreach that we're getting ready to launch in April 5, 6, and 7. It's called the Book of Life. And we are excited about this community outreach, and we would love to have your involvement. If you've not signed up yet, please, there's plenty of time for you to get involved. Uh, practices are Thursday at 6 o'clock each Thursday night up until the production, and we have room for everybody. And we are excited about getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out to our community, and we would love to have you help us win so. So remember, April 5, 6, and 7 is the Book of Life. Practices each Thursday night at 6 o'clock here at the church located at 1010 Terry Andrews Road. So let us know. Let us hear from you. Remember, God loves you. Hey, this is Wendell, the youth pastor here at the church. And I'd like to invite everybody from the age of 12 to 18 to come see us this Wednesday night at our youth group. It's called Spot Youth Ministry. It stands for Students with a Testimony. It's a lot of fun. We have a bunch of fun games. They have a lot of Exciting things going on. So come see. Well, that's what we started the launch anyway. Amen. We're excited about what God's doing at Faith Assembly. We're excited about what God is doing at, at our church, and it's, it's just a, a wonderful time to be in. God said, and the last day he would pour his spirit out upon all flesh. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Acts chapter 26 and stand for the reading of the Word of God. We're going to read two verses of Scripture this morning. We have a lot of people out uh, due to sickness. And Casey has a quick announcement this morning concerning uh, the, the women's meeting. Amen. All right. We've had a little bit of a change. We're still going to meet tomorrow night at 630. I'm inviting all the women ages 16 to 116 out with us. We will have child care, so I don't want to hear you can't come because of your children. It'll be provided. Um, the way I see it is we all, young, old, have something to teach and something to learn. So we'd love to have you come and have us get together as women. Um, Miss Liz is the gift that keeps on giving, apparently. She's going to be, uh, since Miss Dana had a little tumble, she's going to be filling in for Miss Dana and, and giving us a good word tomorrow night. Um, also, we need you to bring your recipes. We're still working on that. The deadline is the end of this month. We've got to get them in to get a good cookbook out, and we know everybody's got some good recipes at home. Um, it doesn't have to be women. It can be men. It could be your grandma or somewhere, someone else. Some, uh, yeah, children, yeah, children recipes even. Uh, so y'all come on out tomorrow night, 630. We'd love to have you. You don't have to bring anything, just yourself and a smile. That's God's gals, y'all. God's gals, and, I, and I, I love our ministry that the women have. Amen. Acts 26 and verse 18, if you would please, verse 18. And for the next three weeks, I'm going to deal with something. I know the Lord spoke to my heart standing in the back of the sanctuary the other day. And uh, upon looking and appearing rude, have left uh, the, the conversation that we were in, I knew the Lord had spoke this into my, my heart, my spirit, to begin to share this, that if we're going to touch our community for the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to have a vision. We have to have vision. Acts 26 and verse 18, if you're there, say amen. amen. The Bible said to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. That's our job. And from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Would you say amen? 
I want to talk to you in the next two Sundays on this thought, the power of vision, the power of a dream, the power of vision. Father, add your anointing to this word this morning. So much is going on. It's hard for me to wrap my mind among everything that you're doing. And Father, I don't ever want it to be about Ronnie Smith. I want it to be always about you. I just want to be a part of what you're doing in the kingdom through the local body called Faith Assembly. Be glorified in all that is said, sung, and done. I give you praise always in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. 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 You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I, I believe that all of us here have a dream, a vision, a God-inspired dream or vision inside of us. I believe something that is larger than yourself, something that you constantly think about, something that keeps you awake at night, a business or, or something that pushes you to keep going forward in life. You need a vision to keep you going forward in life. Now remember, if you have a card, anytime I say something, you want to bring your card up to the front and turn your offering in, just go ahead, you'll make me feel like I'm one of those big TV preachers. Amen. Amen. I'm still trying to lose enough weight so I'll look good on television. Amen. So bring your offering anytime you want to, and we'll appreciate it. You need a vision to keep, go, to keep pushing you forward in life. I've come to the conclusion that the most powerful thing and the most tragic thing that can happen to a person is the birth of a dream, and then you lose that dream. Because life has a way of bringing ups and downs. Life has a way of bringing setbacks and tragic events in your life that causes us to lose our drive, causes us to lose our ambition or our vision or our dream. Life has a way of putting hardship on you to make you begin to compromise in areas that you used to believe that you could achieve greatness in. The Bible said that God gave Paul a vision. And Paul said, I'm never going to give up on this vision because I believe it's achievable. And when Paul made this statement, he's at the end of his life. He's got a grin on his face and he says, I was able to do it. I can't believe that I was able to do it. I can't believe that I actually did it, but I did do it because I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. What is vision? Vision is foresight with insight based on hindsight. Vision is foresight with insight based on hindsight. That's what vision is. It's like the man who got up in the, in the wee hours of the morning and he went to the restroom and he, he, he saw a glass of, of water, had a little water in it, so he just drank it and uh, he uh, wound up getting sick and going to the doctor and the doctor said, you know, well, what's going on? Well, something's wrong with me and he said, and it must be my nerves because my wife is mad at me. Said, well, why is she mad at you? Because I drank the water in the glass. You're in trouble with your wife because you drank the water in the glass? He said, yeah. How was I supposed to know that her contact lenses was in the glass? The doctor said, well, at least you've got 20-20 hindsight now. When you talk about vision, you look before you. You look within you, and then you look behind you. In other words, you see something that you want to do, young people, a goal, maybe to be the next Christian artist or the next governor or the next president, the next senator that's going to be spirit-filled and, 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 and rolling in holiness to make a difference in our country if the Lord should tarry. Maybe whatever it is that you want to do, you have to look within you. You have to look before you, and then you look behind you. In Genesis 37, we have the story of Joseph. He had a dream, and in this dream that he had, it began to change his entire life. But in order for his dream to be fulfilled, Three people had to walk into Joseph's life. And if your dream, if our church vision is going to be accomplished, there are three types of people that are going to have to step into our lives. There's always going to be, number one, a butler. Somebody say butler. 
A butler is someone who opens doors for you, someone who gives you a chance or an opportunity. And this is who I would consider the Holy Spirit, who the Bible said that he will open a door that no man can close and close a door that no man can open. And if we want favor in our community, we've got to get a vision for the kingdom of God. And when we do that for his glory, he opens doors for us. Secondly, there will be a baker. A baker is someone who takes different ingredients and somehow pulls it all together. And if we're going to build a great church for, for Pike County and Macomb, if you're going to be plugged into what I consider a great church for your family, that when hell is coming against you and your family, then you have somewhere that you can plug into and say, I can go over there and I can get some victory and then serve notice on the devil that greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. And it starts, friend, with vision. Thirdly, and I would call that the pastor. The pastor has to somehow pull it all together. He has to work in close proximity and hand in hand under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the pastor will mentor or pull it all together. That's why the pastor has to have a vision for the church that when the young people or your marriage is in trouble, he loves you enough to say, this is what we've got to do. I've got to have a vision if we're going to have a healthy church. A healthy church is built upon healthy family. And then thirdly, there'll be a Pharaoh Pharaoh is the one who financed the dream that Joseph had, and you are the Pharaoh. You are the one that will help finance the vision to touch Pike County. If you believe in faith assembly, if you believe in your leadership that you've elected last week, then somewhere, somehow, you've got to say, I'm going to be able to help finance the vision that God is speaking to the pastor and God is speaking to the leadership. And it's not just us. It's us here. The, the praise team is part of the vision. The musicians here on Tuesday, Donald here throughout all week long helping tweak this and do that. And Shelly in the children's church and Brother T. Wendell on, in, on SWAT on Wednesday night and Kid Mo and Mo Kids and, and a whole bunch of kids. I hope we have a whole bunch of them. And it takes all of the leadership pulling it all together to have vision. I feel the Spirit of the Lord. To have vision to touch this community with the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, every person that's ever lived and done anything great was a dreamer. And if you ask them, what kept you going? What motivated you? How did you keep on, you know, succeeding? What made that dream come true? How did you do what you did? Every one of them will tell you it starts with a dream. It starts with a vision. And there's a sequence of how vision and dreams unfold in our lives. And from my personal experience, I'm going to give you five quick uh, uh, steps. It's a process. And I believe five things that help us unfold our dream. First of all, you have to start thinking about a dream. You have to start thinking. I can't tell you how I lose sleep during the week thinking about this church. I, I lay awake and I, I toss and I turn and Dana gets mad and says, why don't you just go to sleep? And I'm thinking, if I could, I would. And I'm thinking, my mind, the wheels in my mind thinking, I love this place. I love this place. I love this place. What can I do? How can I, can I pray more? Will it bring more favor? Can I do, what can I do? And I think about all of you all of the time. How can I be a great pastor and, and it's, it's busy and it's going to get busier, but I'm thinking about you. How can I do that? It starts with a vision. And you've got to start thinking about it because if a dream is going to be realized, it starts in your thinking as a man thinketh. So is he. If you think your church is nothing, then guess what? Our church is still going to succeed. You're going to be the nothing because the church continues to go forward. And I'm not going to let you lagger behind. I'm dragging you with me. You may kick and claw and scream and bite, but you're going to bite me all the way into the kingdom of God. Amen. you got to start thinking about it. And you know you have to allow your mind to dream and believe that things are possible. But you don't understand, Pastor. I was born on the wrong side of the track, but my Bible teaches me that my God owns all of the cattle on the hill, on a thousand hills, and all of the silver. It makes no difference where you were born. It does matter what you think about yourself. You're looking at somebody that was born poor. Amen. We, we didn't have silver spoons in our mouth. And I've told you my history. 
window was in the grocery store and he saw something and showed it to Michaela and, uh, and, and said, look at here, because I talked about from time to time when I was growing up in the Delta, eating pig's feet and noodles and hog ear and potatoes and, and, and that type of food. And, and that's what I was raised on. And thank God, thank God, thank God I don't have to eat pig feet anymore. It starts with a vision of prosperity and now I can afford some, at least some sardines. You've got to think. You've got to think a vision. You have to allow your mind to dream and believe that God can actually use you to accomplish something great for his kingdom. And most people get defeated because they get defeated in their thinking, in their mind. The Proverbs 27 says this, that iron sharpens iron. In other words, you've got to get around other people that, that, that are sharp. You, you don't, don't let negative people speak into your life. I don't mind talking and hanging out some, you know, with some negative people because I want to influence them that God can use you. God loves you. God has a dream and a vision and a destiny for you. But if you want to stay over on negative, on negative hill, uh, you know, eventually you'll have to be negative by yourself. Because I've learned that positive people influence negative people at some point. But if you're going to remain negative, I can't run with you too long lest your negativity influences my positivity. And so you have to think about it. You have to get around positive people because when the wrong people have access to speak things into your life and all they speak is negative, it affects your outlook on life, it affects your ministry, it affects your church, it affects your family. It never surprises me how so many people think church, faith, assembly is centered around them. And if they ever get an attitude and leave that God's going to write Ichabod over the door, you must be tripping. The last time I checked my Bible, Jesus said because of his shed blood on Calvary and talking to Simon Peter, he said upon this rock, I will build my church. And he did not say, Ronnie Smith, it's so good that I'll, you know, if he gets mad, I want the church to go forward and I want to be on board when it does. Go ahead, give the Lord a clap offering. Amen, makes me preach a little bit better. Iron sharpens iron simply means surround yourself with sharp people. Get around Glenn. Get around there. They sharp. You know why Glenn's sharp? Because he's married to Carol. He was not near as intelligent as he, as he is today as he was when she married him. Okay. Surround yourself with sharp people. If you're, if, if you're going to go where you've never been, you'll have to meet some people that you've never met who will give you some opportunity. So first of all, you have to start thinking. Tell your neighbor, say, I've got to start thinking right. Paul said, Paul said in Acts chapter 26 and verse number 2, he said, I think myself happy. You know how you, you, know how you get depressed? You think yourself depressed. You know how you get discouraged? You think yourself discouraged. Oh, I'll never catch that green light. I know I know. I bet it turns red. I bet it turns red. I bet it turns red. And next thing you know, you catch the red light. You know what? You smoke it. I see a green light. I keep on trucking. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I might be doing 95 all the way through, but I'm going to make that green light. And if it turns red, I just claim it on color blindness. Amen. It was green all the way through the life. You know how you get happy? You think yourself happy. I know I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You think yourself positive. I can do it. God, God has created me to be more than a conqueror. It starts with right thinking. You can do it. You can, you can believe that God's got a dream for you. Moses told the spies, to go check out the promised land. Twelve went out. Ten came back with a negative report. And two came back with a positive report. You know what? He didn't send random people out of the millions. He sent the leadership. He sent each leader from the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, you go check it out. Ten came back with a negative report. Two came back with a positive report. Ten said there are giants. And two of them said, man, there's giant food over there. Listen, you will never eat giant food if you're not willing to fight the giant. 
If you want giant grapes, you got to fight the giant. We went to uh, the father-daughter dance last night, and after that, uh, I asked Grace and Michaela, I said, where y'all want to eat? I was trying to talk them into McDonald's. I was being a tightwad. And they both told Wendell and I, said, we're not eating at McDonald's. We're going to Ruby Tuesday. So I found the best steak at Ruby Tuesday. I can find the biggest steak. $18 for a steak. That steak should have been as big as this pulpit. I could have ate three of them things they brought out there for $18. I thought I ate fast. Wendell had his wolf down in two bites. And if you're going to fight the giant, if you're going to get the giant steak, you got to be willing to fight them. You can't have the rewards without a battle. Are you listening to me? Ten said there are giants. Two said there are huge grapes. And it's all in how they were seeing it that made them think it. Listen to me. You've got to fight the giant if you want the victory. Ten said we're grasshoppers in their sight. Two of them said we're giant killers. Ten said... We're as grasshoppers, and two of them said we're giant killers. And if you have a grasshopper mentality, then that's all you're going to be able to speak. Because if you think your dream is too big and God cannot use you, and you're too small, and you'll never achieve anything, you don't understand. I come from the wrong side of the family, the wrong side of the tribe. My family has never been nothing. Listen to me. You were born through your mother's womb, but God planted you as a divine seed to pass through that womb and to release you through faith assembly into your prophetic destiny because Jesus is coming again, and we've got to get a vision to touch our let me share a couple of things about grasshoppers. He didn't say squirrels. He didn't say monkeys. He didn't say dogs. Why a grasshopper? Because a grasshopper's greatest defense is camouflage. And some of them can take on the color of the environment that it's in. If they're in the beach, they can turn sandy brown. If they're in the woods, they can turn green. They just blend in. Let me tell you something about grasshoppers. Grasshoppers have wings, but they don't fly. They just hop. And you're a grasshopper when you have wings, but you never fly. You just hop. That's what a grasshopper does. He just hops from church to church. He just hops from bed to bed, from marriage to marriage. He just hops. He just blends in, doesn't take all of that. It does, all, it does take all of that. When you get tired of the devil beating you up, you will learn the importance of having a vision for your family. Quit letting the devil mess up your thinking because you, somebody told you 40 years ago that's already dead and gone to glory and they've got a revelation of seeing the lamb right there in heaven and here you are still on earth thinking, well, Grandma told me 60 years ago that faith wasn't really necessary. It is in the day in which we live. Without faith, it is impossible. Without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please my God. Pastor, I'm strapped financially. If you've got no faith, you're going to stay strapped. If you don't get a vision, you're going to stay strapped. But I'm on fixed income. Trust God. Watch God just change it. Secondly, secondly, you've got to catch it. You've got to catch it. Catching a vision goes beyond what you're thinking and it gets a hold of you. It becomes a part of you. You know, I've learned one thing. How many, how many business owners do we have here? Employer. You know, I've learned one thing. There are some kind of employees that make a difference on the job. There are some employees that I just love to be around. They've got a smile on their face Monday morning. They've got a song in their heart. Amen. They hadn't been out in the honky-tonk drinking and smoking and, and spending up their paycheck. They've got a song. They've been to church. They've been fed the Word of God. Amen. And they just, they, they just make a big difference on the job. And then there are some employees who complain about everything going on with their job, and they get a paycheck every week while they criticize everything going on in the company. And I've learned one thing. You may not have a Ph.D., but you know I've learned something. There are some people who are educated way beyond their intelligence level anyway. There are some people who just think they're a fountain of wisdom, but they're nothing but a big old squirt. You get a job, Pastor, I need a job. I need a job. We pray. You ask God for favor. And you get a job, and you go in early, and then six months later, you're 10 minutes late every day. 
And then you wonder why the boss isn't giving you that promotion. You've got you've to treat your boss with respect. You've got to be favorable. You've got to have a vision to help that business do something. When Moses sent the spies into the promised land, he sent the leaders to see if they would come back and encourage the millions of Israel. See, you have to get excited about what God wants to do in your life. Enthusiasm goes a long way. I love it here. I love it here. I really do. Oh, yeah, because you get a paycheck. <laughs> I love it because God called me to preach this glorious gospel. There's not a paycheck that can make me do what I'm doing right now just for the sake of a paycheck because there are some days I wish I could go back to selling vacuum cleaners. And I stunk at that. But some days stunk at seems better than where I'm at today. And you just stay humbled, you just stay in prayer, and you just stay positive. You know, my pastor taught me years ago, this too shall pass. And if you'll just keep trusting God, the vision, if it's connected to the harvest for the kingdom of God, you, hey, Sister Fern, how you doing? I just saw you, oh, y'all, excuse me. Put that camera on me, follow me, son, amen. Come here and hug my neck. Come here and hug my neck. Well, you got to say that in English so I can understand it now. Amen. I'll call her mama. I just, you've got to, you, you've got to get a dream. You got to catch this. You've got to catch it. Because if you catch it, man, it pushes you. No matter what bad day you have. It's like, I'm going to do it. It's like the little train. What's that name? Uh, the little train. Uh, who is it? Something, yeah. I, I, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Toot, toot. I think I can. I think I can. Toot, toot. Help me. I think I can. I think I can. How you doing, Liz? You all right? Enthusiasm. I, I love this place, man. I get, I, I, I got here about 6.30, 6.45 this morning. Grace was with me. I said, ha, 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 I beat T. Wendell this morning because I think it's, 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 it's a contest. Who gets here earlier, me or, or Wendell? There's going to come a time where we won't even go home. <laughs> Enthusiasm. It's like the mother who churned butter and put it in blocks by the dozen. And she told her son one day, she said, son, you take this butter up to the store owner and you sell it. And I want 50 cents a dozen, but I will go as low as 35 cents a dozen. And he said, okay. So the little boy goes to the store owner. He walks in, says, I've got this butter. And my mom said she wants 50 cents a dozen, but she said she'd go as low as 35. So the store owner gave him 35 cents for the dozen. The little boy got his money, and he's walking out. And the, the store owner, wanting to teach the young boy a lesson in economics, said, well, wait a minute, son. Wait, wait a minute. Come, come back here. said, now, I would have given you 50 cents for the dozen more than the 35 cents, and you don't have to tell everything that you know. Little boy said, I didn't tell you everything. The store owner looked at him and said, well, what did you not tell me? He said, I didn't tell you that the cat fell in the churn. Listen, there's always going to be ups and downs to everything that you do. There's always going to be something going on. But stay excited about what you're doing because you'll make a difference. So we've got the I think about it. I'm going to catch it. Now you've got to buy it. Third thing, you've got to buy it. You've got to buy it. See, anybody can think about doing something great. Anybody can get excited and have ambition and say, I'm going to do it. But eventually, you've got to catch the vision and get excited about it because that's why it separates the boys from the men. It's when you put your finances into the vision because Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. My heart is faith assembly. That's a good point right there. My check will be with it in the morning. Hallelujah. You've got to buy into it. You've got to buy into it. You've got to buy into the vision. In other words, there's got to be a price that's paid. Anytime I see someone successful, I understand that while I look at their present success, I know there's got to be past failures. 
There's been a time when all everybody who's ever successful, they were eating sardines at one time or another. Don't get jealous of someone's successes. You don't know what they got, what they went through to get to where they are. That's why when I see people down on their luck, man, I, I help them. I pull them up and say, come on. I, I, someone this morning, hey, you know, I'm, I don't know. It's just this thing I've gotten back into with God. I'm buying into it because the people that walk through these doors, I believe absolutely without a shadow of doubt that at 53 years young, God has put me in the best time and in the best season of my ministry. I'm looking good. I'm slimming up. Glory to God. I can button my jacket, but they told me not to. Amen. So I believe that the glory that resides on this building is strictly due that the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord, he's king and king and Lord of lords over this building. And at 1010 Carrie Andrews Road, God's going to give us a great visitation. You're not saying nothing to me, but I'm telling you, in the last day, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I bought into it when I moved my family here. I bought into you. When I move my family here. That's why I can preach like I preach every Sunday. If the house is full, and it's been fuller than it is today. And I'm preaching to you because I bought into it. And I'll keep buying into it. Number four, I'm going to seek after it. And when that happens, they're out there. They, people have put it on the line. And people who put it on the line can be found in two classes of people. Either you're a water walker or you're a boat setter. If you're a boat setter, you just sit there and complain about the, the way people are rowing. Don't complain about the way people are rowing if they're going to get you to your destiny. Amen. I don't know if I'd try that or not, Pastor. Ooh, I had an uncle one time that tried to be successful, and now they feed him from underneath a door. And I'd rather get out there and try something than sit around my entire life wondering what could have been, should have been, might have been. You know, well, you may fall down. I may fall down, but I can get up. And if I don't succeed the first time, I'm going to get back up and get into my boat. And I've made up in my mind that if I'm going to drown, I'm going to drown getting out of that boat, trying to walk on the water and trying to get to my Jesus. Amen. And I pray that he'll be just as close to me if I start going down as he was to Peter and reach out there. And at least he'll say, oh, ye of little faith, but pull me up. Amen, Jesus. I can always get up. See, everyone who has finally succeeded at anything in life were at one time under the classification of a successful failure. What do you mean by that? The founder of Chick-fil-A, you know Chick-fil-A? Was so tongue-tied that he could put, not put three words together without stumbling over them. And when he opened his first store, it burned down within weeks. He pulled all of his money together and when he got a second store built, his brothers, who were his partner, were all killed in a plane crash. Don't you know all the skeptics came around then? Because some people just can't wait to criticize your dream and to tell you how bad you're failing. That's why you get around this bunch. Get around Ginger Chapel. Get around David Pickard. Get around Ed Bull. You get around them and let them say, anytime you fall there, they can pick you up and say, we've been there before. But look at me now. Amen. Finally, he kept trying, and today, because of his, his, his spirit of six, wanting to succeed, he has a tremendous business that employs thousands and feeds millions. There was a young man who rode three times in West Point, and he was denied each time. But he told him, said, if you let me in here, I'll make you a great general. And the fourth time, they accepted him and became General Douglas MacArthur. Henry Ford went bankrupt the first time he tried to get into the automobile business. He went bankrupt a second time when he started the automobile business. But the third one, when he got it going, it's still doing pretty good. 23 publishers rejected a children's book by the name of Dr. Seuss. 23 times they said, you can't write. You can't write. You can't write. Go back to the chicken farm. You can't write. But the 24th publisher took his book on a chance, and the first printing sold 6 million copies, and it's still being sold today. So it's not up to what people say about you. It's what you believe what God can do in your life. Colonel, well, but I'm old. I'm old. Preacher Colonel Sanders was 70 years old when he opened up his first 
chicken, thicken, finger licking store. 70 years old, and I was licking my fingers earlier last week. 70 years old, because the 70 year old man said it's not too late to get a dream or a vision. Thomas Edison was 85 when he invented the mimograph machine. John Wesley was 88 and still preaching on horseback three times a day. You know what our young people need? Our young people need a dream to not get involved with drugs or alcohol. Our young people need a dream to not boys to ruin girls and to conquer a girl or girls to conquer a boy. The majority of reason why kids go astray is because they don't have a dream of going somewhere else. Alexander the Great conquered the world by the time he was 33 years old because he had a vision. But after he conquered the world, he lost his dream at a bottle of liquor. David had a dream and conquered Goliath. But when he lost his dream, he couldn't conquer his own lust, Bathsheba. Samson had a dream, conquered every enemy that went before him, and even killed a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. But he lost his dream, and then he couldn't conquer a 90-pound-year-old, a 90-pound woman called Delilah. My point is this. Don't ever lose your dream. Don't ever lose your vision. Get connected to a, a vision, a God dream. Get connected to a God vision. Think about it, and then get a hold of it, and, 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 and then get excited about it, and buy into it, and seek after it. And the last stage I want to give you, and then teach it. Teach it. Teach these young people. Watch this. This is the stage that we decided we don't want to lose our vision, but we turn around, and we begin to mentor another generation. Because... I'm 53 years old. If the Lord tarries, I've got to have another generation come up underneath me and behind me and teach them how to succeed. And what a great thought that is because what we do today is, is building a great church and a great mindset and release a, a, how to have a successful church that flows in the gifts of the Spirit and under the, the presence of the Holy Spirit to another generation. Real success and dreams that God gives us are supposed to be multi-generational dreams. Amen. It's not about just Ronnie. It's never supposed to be about Ronnie. Well, yes it is. But let me give you scripture that says this because the Bible said that he's not just the God of Abraham. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Faith assembly has to be a multi-generational church. We've got, oh, glory to God. We've got to release this vision to the next generation. Gavin and Garrett, if the Lord tells I want them to grow up and say, I remember that old crazy preacher, but he taught me victory and authority and how to get a vision connected to the kingdom of God. God doesn't mind blessing you if your dream, if your vision is connected to the harvest. God doesn't have a problem if you want to be the next Christian artist, the next Sandy Patty, the next Kirk Franklin, the next Doug Williams. <laughs> I get over in the radio station with Sister Fern. She starts putting on that soulish music. I just start saying, mm -hmm. Lord, don't you know? We just start hooping it up right there in her, her office. We've got to release it to Taylor, to Jalen, Tracy and Serena, Megan. It's about you. Everything this preacher is trying to do today is for you. It is for you. Because I understand that God is a multi-generational God. And people who do great things are not just thinking about themselves, but they're thinking about the next generation. God wants to bless me so he can pass it down to his children. Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. There's got to be something in us. There ought to be something in us that we teach and train the next generation and raise them up to take the time to meet toward them and release a Holy Spirit, gold filled church into their care. So who's going to get a vision with the preacher today? Who's going to get a vision with a pastor today? Who's going to get a vision with a pastor today? Who's going to get a vision for the book of life, our first evangelistic outreach? You say, I can't act. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can do something. Get a vision. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. 
I didn't even know how much I was believing God for until I started speaking. I'm believing God for 200 people to get saved through this production. Are we ready for that? We better get prepared for it. I've been praying. How many should I believe you for? Didn't know what I was going to say until just then. There it is. I believe that's just my prophetic utterance. I'm just going to believe in 200 people to come in and make a decision. What are we going to do with 200 people? If they get saved, we're going to disciple them. We're going to add them to the foundation of faith assembly, and we're going to put faith in them. We're going to put the love of God in them. We're going to put a dream and a vision in them. How many, ooh, 200 people? Ooh, what are we going to do then? We'll have church five times a day if we have to. Daniel preach one service. Wendell preach one. I preach one. We've got to raise it up for another generation. And if you'll get a vision with me and the leadership, if you'll get a vision with, with me and the leadership and catch it and buy into it and seek after it and, and work with us, we can take this city for the kingdom of God. We can take this city for the kingdom of God. Amen. Stand with me. Will you get a vision? Will you get a vision? Will you get a dream? Will you, will you get connected? Will you get connected? Well, Pastor, I just don't know a whole lot about this church thing. Listen, we're, we're not interested in church as some of religious, legalistic, religious thing. We love this because this, we believe this bride called Faith Assembly is alive. It's a divine movement. You're the church and this church is going to succeed upon you getting the right mindset. Amen. Wednesday night I walk into the fellowship hall where I do the Bible study on favor. And man, by the time we got started, I looked across that fellowship hall and I thought, my goodness, I've got a crowd here tonight. Someone came up and said, man, I pulled in the church park line and said, I hadn't seen that many cars on a Wednesday night in a long time. I'm thinking, keep on doing it, Lord. Keep on doing it. Why? If we just get a vision, it's not about being the big dog in town, okay? It has nothing to do with my ego or your ego. It has to do everything. It has to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Lord of this house. And if we preach him and lift him up, I believe this. He's drawing me into him. And that's all we're doing. And on Wednesday nights, come get some of this teaching on favor. Because when you start believing God loves you and wants to favor you, then you start dreaming. You get a vision. And I need you, ladies and gentlemen. I need you. I need you. I need 100 people or more to give $250. Because I'm going to tell you straight up front now, just as soon as all of this is done and this is popping, we're going to take about two weeks off. We're going to breathe. We're going to regroup. And we're going to find something else to do for the kingdom of God. Because I've learned one thing that I had never been nothing else but Pentecostal. And the minute you let Pentecostal sit down, oh, my Lord, they sit down. But I believe the coming of the Lord is so close. It's, it's imperative. It's vital that everyone in this room today get this vision. Next week, the Lord tarries. As the Lord, as the Lord tarries, the Lord enables. I'm going to preach on get out of the safe zone. Get in the faith zone. Get out of the safe zone. Get in the faith zone. God's got a plan for you. Tell your neighbor, say, God's got a plan for me. Say it with some soul. God got a plan for me. He's going to give me victory. If I will just hold on, Jesus is going to. If you don't have the word, just hum it. Amen. Amen. How many of you are going to get a vision with me this morning? Every head bowed, every eye closed. We've got to take communion. I've got, to, I've got to hurry. Please, no one looking. We had four people give their heart to the Lord over the last week, week and a half. If you're here this morning, you say, Brother Ronnie, I do not know Jesus Christ as my Savior. i got sin in my life. I'm lost. Please pray for me. I like that enthusiasm. I like your joy. Oh, I'd love to have some of it. If you're here this morning, the first step for you is to know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
and that eternity in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, I believe heaven is real. If you're here this morning, you say, pray for me, preacher. I got to get my life in order with God. Throw your hand up. Just hold it up. Very quickly, do it now, and then you can put it right back down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is what I want you to do. My, 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 my altar workers are coming right now. And if you're here, listen to me. I just told you four people got saved over the last week, week and a half. If you're here, you raise your hand. Now, if you'll be so bold as to say, I mean business with God this morning, Pastor. I want you to slip out of your seat if you raised your hand. I want you to come down to the front. And we're going to lead you through the sinner's prayer, and you're going to give your heart to God. You're going to forever seal your name. You're going to make mistakes, but you're going to get up, and you're going to have a vision through this church called Faith Assembly of this body. Come on, you raise your hand. Slip out of your seat now. Come on, come on, come on. It's all right. I'm meeting, I'll meet you down here. I'm down here on the floor. Come on. Jesus said this, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you to the Father. Come on. You got to buy it. You got to buy into this now. You've got to trust Jesus that he'll take you just the way that you are. Oh, my goodness. He took me just the way I was. He has forever changed my life. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? In the name of Jesus, come now. Come on. Come on. Here comes one. Come on. Come on. Anyone else? It's all right. Amen. Ginger, Liz, come help me, please. Anyone else? Others? You're not living where you're not where you're supposed to be. Come on. Young man, young lady. I can come get you this morning, but I'm not going to. You've got to make that decision yourself. You've got to buy into the fact that Jesus will change your life for the better. You've got to make that decision. You've got to turn away from your lifestyle and sell out to Jesus and say, you're going to be my Savior. You're going to be my Lord. Will you come? Come on. He is Lord. Oh, He is Lord. Every Every tongue, every tongue will confess all oh, that Jesus Christ. He is Lord, oh, He is Lord, and He is Lord. Will you come, anybody else? Come on.
You can start that business. He's my Lord. You're not too old. God still has a dream for you. He's got a vision. Maybe you can teach a generation your trade. He's my Lord. I tell the musician, raise up another generation behind you. He teach them. Oh, from oh yeah. Vision for our church, God. I believe you. 100 people, God, to buy into it. Hallelujah. We will touch our community for the gospel of Jesus Christ, for the glory of God. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We can do it. We can do it. We can partner. We can partner with other churches to touch our community. into Holy Communion while the spirit of worship is here. Everyone that would, would you please come and just make a, a line or a, a circle around the sanctuary and then Wendell and I, Brother Daniel actually, and Brother Daniel would come. I'm going to ask everybody if you would just make one big circle across the front and stretch it all the way around if you have to. make just one big circle. I'm going to ask these two fine young men. We'll pray in just a second. Thank you, Brother Chris. 